A wave of fury washed over Estelle as the weathered coffin, borne by stoic figures in black, entered the echoing church. This was her brother Stefan's funeral, and a promise hung heavy. A promise not to cry. The mournful hymns offered no solace. Stefan, consumed by flames from a gas leak, was gone. Robin, his closest friend, recounted the fire's brutal wrath, leaving only fragments behind. A closed casket, Robin insisted, to shield them from the unbearable sight. Left with no choice, they agreed. Estelle's grief was a suffocating weight. Not only had she lost her brother in a horrific way, but she was denied the final goodbye, a chance to see his face. Unfair, she raged, a storm of anger and sorrow brewing within her. Grief-stricken and disoriented, Estelle bolted towards the casket. Tradition demanded it remain closed, but Stefan was her brother, and she yearned for one last glimpse. Relatives lunged to restrain her, their efforts dwarfed by the surge of grief that empowered her. As she strained against their grasp, a misstep sent her sprawling, her head connecting with the cold concrete floor. Before we embark on this captivating journey, we kindly invite you to show your support by engaging with our content. Please consider giving this video a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and leaving a thoughtful comment stating, I've subscribed. Additionally, if you find this story as inspiring as we do, don't forget to share it with your loved ones. Your support means the world to us. Estelle and Stefan were the only children of Sam and Betty Johnson. After Stefan's arrival, a fervent yearning for another child remained unfulfilled. Then, defying expectations, Estelle entered the world five years later. A complete family, the Johnsons weren't wealthy, but their love ensured a comfortable life. Stefan cherished his little sister, his love intensifying after her autism diagnosis. He became her protector, a fierce guardian against a world she struggled to navigate. To Estelle, shrouded in the fog of autism, Stefan was a superhero, her entire world. Tragedy shattered their happiness with Sam's death in a car accident. Stefan, a young man on the cusp of college, and Estelle, a sixth grader, were left reeling. The world seemed to crumble. Sam, their sole provider, was gone. With Betty's frequent illnesses hindering her ability to work, the burden of responsibility fell squarely on Stefan's young shoulders. Bills mounted, a constant reminder of the gaping hole left by their father's absence. Driven by a fierce protectiveness, Stefan shouldered the family's financial burden. Landing two jobs, one at a bank and another at a car wash, he juggled long hours to keep food on the table, afford Estelle's medication, and tackle mounting bills. The weight of responsibility at such a young age was undeniable, but Stefan faced it head on. College found Stefan excelling in civil engineering, his future bright, Fate, however, had a cruel turn in store. During his final year, Betty's health plummeted, leading to a devastating diagnosis, end-stage kidney failure. Weekly dialysis, with a possible kidney transplant down the line, was the stark reality. The doctor's words shattered Stefan. His meager earnings barely covered basic necessities, let alone the exorbitant cost of treatment. The weight on his young shoulders became a crushing burden. He desperately needed help, and fast. Estelle, Heartbroken by her mother's condition, yearned to ease her brother's struggle. Though Stefan maintained a brave facade, Estelle saw the financial strain etched on his face. Unable to offer solutions, she showered him with unwavering support and appreciation. A week passed, and Stefan confided in Robin, his closest friend and a financial lifeline. Robin, moved by his plight, proposed a quick-fix solution that sent shivers down Stefan's spine. He revealed a connection to a Mexican drug lord named Carlos Armando, desperate for a discreet courier. Robin, a former associate of Armando, promised an introduction through a mutual contact. The proposition stunned Stefan. He craved the money to save his mother, but drug smuggling was a terrifying prospect. He voiced his fear, but Robin insisted a single run would solve all their problems. Torn between desperation and fear, Stefan wrestled with Robin's words. Ultimately, the desire to save his mother outweighed his trepidation. He agreed, convinced this would be a one-time act to secure their future. Robin, wasting no time, contacted the intermediary who would connect Stefan with the notorious Armando. Two days later, a nervous Stefan stood face to face with the imposing Armando in a grimy subway station. A fat Cuban cigar jutted from Armando's lips as he assessed Stefan. Stefan held his breath, his facade barely masking his fear. Armando approved, 
relief washing over Stefan. The mission Armando offered Stefan and two others seemed unreal. Posing as students, they'd travel to Mexico, smuggle backpacks stuffed with $10 million worth of cocaine back, and earn a hefty 15% cut. A fortune danced in Stefan's head. $500,000 enough to save his mom, buy a house for them, secure their future. His grand plans revolved around his family, showering them with the life they deserved. A week later, after meticulous planning, Stefan and the gang embarked on their student trip to Mexico. Unbeknownst to them, a traitor within Armando's cartel had spilled the beans to a rival gang. As they neared the U.S. border, an ambush shattered their illusion of success. Rival gang members materialized, guns drawn, and relieved them of the precious backpacks before disappearing like phantoms. Stefan's world crumbled. Breaking the news to Armando was a nightmare he dreaded. But the sooner the better, he thought. However, Armando wasn't receptive to their story. Bull was his only response. The fury in his eyes was terrifying. $10 million worth of drugs vanished. Armando smelled betrayal. Double crossers, he thought. The sentence was brutal. Two weeks to find the drugs or come up with the equivalent cash, or face the consequences. Terror coiled around Stefan's heart. Armando's wrath was inescapable. In hiding with Robin's help, he managed a heartbreaking call to Estelle. Big mess, princess, he choked out. Take care of mom, make her proud. The line went dead before Estelle could pry for answers. Her frantic calls met only with silence. Five days after the surreal events at the funeral, a chilling phone call shattered Estelle's fragile hope. It was Robin, Stefan's best friend, his voice laced with a disturbing coldness. He delivered the news that ripped the world from beneath Estelle's feet. Stefan is dead. A fire while cooking rushed him to the hospital, but... The phone slipped from her grasp as tremors coursed through her body, a fresh wave of grief and terror replacing the anger that lingered from before. The news felt like a cruel echo. Just as disbelief overwhelmed her during the funeral's chaos, her head spun, threatening to faint. But a primal urge to reach her brother propelled her forward. Ignoring the concerned grip of relatives, she tore free with an inhuman strength fueled by grief. The disfigured face didn't matter, she just needed to see him. Before anyone could react, Estelle had thrown open the coffin. What awaited her wasn't Stefan, not even a trace. An empty shell, a mannequin dressed to resemble a corpse, greeted her horrified gaze. A blood-curdling scream tore from her throat as she recoiled. The somber hymn ceased abruptly, replaced by a chorus of gasps as everyone strained to see the macabre sight. Even the priest rushed down, his eyes widening in disbelief at the imposter in the coffin. Chaos erupted as the guests surrounded the open casket, screams echoing through the church. Despite the initial shock, a flicker of hope ignited within Estelle. If not dead, then where was Stefan? What had he gotten himself into? Determined to save him, she turned to their trusted neighbor, Mr. Godfrey, a high-ranking police officer. After a frantic explanation, Godfrey, sensing something deeply amiss, sprang into action. With two officers in tow, Godfrey arrived at the church, searching for Robin. The elaborate lie, the insistence on a closed casket, it was all clear now. Robin was hiding something. But Robin had vanished. Estelle sank into a pit of despair. Stefan, gone. Robin, involved somehow. Even Betty succumbed to the crushing belief of Stefan's demise. Days turned into a blur of tear-filled nights. Then, a glimmer of light, an anonymous tip reached the police. Armando, the notorious drug lord, was behind Stefan's disappearance. This wasn't news to them. Armando had been a thorn in their side for a while. The tipster even revealed Armando's routine, meeting his gang at a deserted subway station every Sunday night. It was the perfect opportunity. The following Sunday, Godfrey led his SWAT team into the abandoned station. A fierce gunfight erupted as Armando and his men refused to surrender. In the ensuing chaos, Armando met his end with a bullet to the head. Estelle's heart hammered in her chest as she opened the door that late evening. Relief slammed into her like a tidal wave. Standing before her, a little worse for wear but undeniably alive, was Stefan. Their embrace was a tangle of limbs and choked sobs. Tears streamed down Estelle's face. Tears of relief, of anger, of a love that had endured a terrifying ordeal. Stefan, racked with guilt, confessed everything. He revealed his desperate plan, 
hatched with Robin's help, to fake his death and escape Armando's clutches. Estelle listened, a whirlwind of emotions swirling within her. Fury at his recklessness warred with gratitude for his sacrifice. Ultimately, love won out. She couldn't stay mad at the brother who'd risked everything for his family. A fierce hug replaced the anger, and Stefan clung on, his voice thick with remorse. I'm so sorry, Estelle. I never meant to hurt you. The following day, Stefan and Robin went to the police. Stefan fabricated a story about owing Armando money and refusing to become a drug peddler. The police, already wary of Armando, readily accepted their tale, seeing Stefan as a victim. News of Armando's death even earned Stefan a hero's label. Stefan's next move surprised everyone. He launched a heartfelt social media plea for his autistic sister, seeking funds for their mother's kidney transplant. The internet responded with overwhelming generosity. Within weeks, their GoFundMe account overflowed with donations, surpassing their target by a staggering $100,000. With the surgery a success, Betty finally came home. Tears flowed freely as the once broken family embraced, their bond strengthened by a shared ordeal. Stefan's actions were a gamble, a desperate measure driven by love. Whether it was the right choice remains a question, but one thing was certain. His family was finally whole again.